Hi, welcome to the New Electromagnetism Applications video number seven. This is the physics software experimental validation. In the previous validation, we validated the software gives us a right answer based on theory. And now what we're going to do is see if the software agrees with what we can observe in the laboratory. And so this is the initial setup. This is the output of the physics software in 3D. This is just my printer on the Fritzen. Um, I've been, I will be switching to a new format later this year, around summertime, where the videos will be PowerPoint directly to a video. I've got to learn how to do that. Somebody's advised me to do that, and so that sounds like a good idea. But for now, uh, we've got to march forward and not make as many changes in other places. This is a, one of the three by one inch neodymium magnets. And over the top of this is a coil of wire, a loop of wire which is going to contain 20 amps. Um, this coil of wire is this, is this is what's going to be used for the experiment. This is a 20 turn coil of wire. The, co the wire is actually on the spacers between the two yardsticks so that it has nearly the same width as the neodymium magnet but double the length. And the purpose for this is this is kind of like the rails of a rail gun and this would be the armature. And so what we're going to do is suspend this reason for the strings on, over a neodymium magnet and pump it with uh, one amp, so that would give me about 20 amps of current, because uh, the number of turns times the amperage is the effective amperage that you're going to get. So we're going to have effectively 20 amps. Okay, so now what we're going to do is a neodymium magnet halfway across it, so it's kind of like the armature is halfway down the rails, halfway along the magnet and then see what kind of force we're going to get. So that comes up, the software comes up with 42 milli or 43 millinewtons which is effectively 4.3 gram equivalent. What that means is if I took the string off the back of this, ran it over the end of the table, how much mass could it lift that would be dangling from a mass over a pulley over the, off, off the end of a table. And so that would be 4.3 grams of lifting force, again lifting against the force of gravity. So let's go to the video of that experiment. What we have here is the uh, force table demonstration and the big frame up here, this is an A-frame to suspend a, this is a 20 turn coil of wire. It's over one of the neodymium magnets halfway. We effectively have a coil here that's twice the length of the neodymium magnet and approximately the same width suspended just over the neodymium magnet being suspended by the A-frame. It's being driven with a current pulse that is four seconds on, four seconds off of one amp. And then it is attached to the force table. There is the force sensor. It is attached to give a scale of two times the force. And the reading we're getting, this is the off. And now it's on. And that reading of about 216, 220 is what we've been getting. Um, that's turning out to be a force that's twice what we're expecting. Granted, the force times lever arm is going to give us twice the force, but we calibrated the table with twice the lever arm over here. So we should get the same answer on a force per force basis. Unless I made a mistake, uh, you guys can double check me on this. The string is attached at 25. The fulcrum is at 15 and the force is at 10 and we calibrated it from 5 going the other way of course over the pulley over the edge of the table so what I'm going to do at this moment here is start going into analysis where what we're going to what I'm going to do I figured out a way to make the measurement without the force table um, and we're going to see what answer we get just using plain weights off the end of the table onto a digital scale so that'll be the next experiment well returning from that video now that video we got I said we're getting twice as much force because I already knew that 220 millivolts on the uh, force table is about double what we should expect. Um, based on the, the calibration, when you have zero grams of weight on the table, you've got 160 millivolt output. When you have 70 grams of mass on the table, you get 600 millivolt output. And so if you do the calculations, you get uh, 93 millinewtons or 94 millinewtons, which is about twice 
the 43 millinewtons that we're looking for. Okay, so essentially we're getting about double the force. Okay, and you know, the, there could be a lot of reasons for this. Usually, though, when you get a factor of two, it's usually human error. Something that neatly round of error is usually round, error. I don't think that the, 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 there's more secrets to magnetism, um, especially not for an experiment like this. So uh, we got to go find out what the problem is. Okay, so the first thing I did, and that'll be in another little clip, is since the force table is pretty much brand new, and I did have issues with the force table being a little bit erratic in its voltage output, I decided, well, let's swap it out. We can use a precision scale to do the, get the same results. And let's go to that video now. Okay, so the first experiment in trying to determine where we're getting a factor of two in the force measurement here is I still have the coil of wire suspended halfway over the neodymium magnet being driven by the current source and then instead of running this to the force table because the force table was the thing I had the most trouble with is we have now instead run the cable over the end of the table and have it pulling up on a 50 gram load. So when it's off because there's tension we're only at 47.73 and then on so 47.52 off, 37.98 on. Okay, that's almost exactly 10 grams, which is a tenth of a newton. And a tenth of a newton, pretty much, I was getting 9.5 newtons from the force table. So that's still twice as much force. The com com computations says it should come out to 0 0.045 newtons. So we've got a factor of two here somewhere. I've got to figure out what's going on. Maybe the magnet table, maybe that sensor is off. So if we subtract the readings from the precision scale, and these aren't exactly the readings in the video, these are another set of, these are pretty consistent readings. They're within a uh, hundredth, couple hundredths of a, of a gram. It doesn't really matter that much to the end result. And so you get 9.55 grams of lifting force that the armature was pulling on the string. That's still double the amount of pulling force that we would expect. So I went and just double checked that I derived the second and fourth term from classical theory where I got the same answer. Uh, I questioned the new magnetism model of magnets. Does treating the edge current of a magnet, does that break down when you get to very, very close distances? We know from long distances away it's a very, very, very good model. But maybe when you get very, very, very close, that loses resolution when you... So I did some experimenting in the software and found that as I move... And so the next thing to do is, well, let's check the magnet table. Maybe the magnet table has a factor of two error in the current it estimates. All right, this experiment is to check the reading from the magnet table. Uh, on the magnet table I have here, this is the old version of a Gauss meter I used to use. Um, it's, the Gauss meter is a uh, little Gauss sensor up in the little red tip over here, and I got it pretty close to the other sensor. I'm measuring the magnetic field of the Earth right now. The magnetic field of the Earth is approximately a half a Gauss, which is properly uh, registered by the magnet table. And if I look at the reading on the, it is uh, this device here converts the sensor from 100 Gauss per volts. Okay, and we're reading 5.2 millivolts, which is pretty much a half a Gauss. So the, you know, sensors are reading the same value, so I don't think it's an error in the table. The next thing we're going to check is to see if the calculation that computes the current from the magnet measurement, see if that software is wrong. What I have here is the next step in the investigation is to validate that the magnet table can accurately reflect the current of the devices that are on it. And so what I've done is I've placed the thing that was suspended by the A-frame, that's basically a 20-turn coil, okay, still being driven by the current source which is pumping one amp into it. So that should give me effectively 20 amps because there's 20 turns. 
And so I punched all the values into the magnetic field tool. Okay, and you can see that the measured current is 20 amps. Well, 19.81, but uh, when I just put this on, this is just roughly put on the table real quickly to get an answer. But this is effectively showing that the software is doing the right thing. It's saying the correct amount of amps we should see. So, okay, and let's go check term number four. What I did as an experiment is I put, oh, I think I actually have a diagram here where we take the coil and put it parallel. And what this does, this optimizes the force from term. When we do the railgun armature, we're mostly getting our effects from term two. So what I want to do now is change this up so that I can optimize my effects from term four. 20 turn coil being pulsed against one of the large neodymium magnets. And over here, I'm being able to like using the scale better because I don't have to interpret what it says, it says what it says, and I like that. And let me re-tear this. Okay, so now when it goes on, it's approximately 12 grams of lifting force. It's wobbling a little bit, it's, well, it's wobbling a little bit, that's part of the reason. I've got to get the well, but it's enough to say it's 12 grams, so let me take the measurements and then go and run this through the computer and then see what the computer says the amount of lifting force should be on this. Okay, and the physics answer is 12.6 grams, and I think that's what we got. And what I initially did is I put in uh, 15 millimeters as the distance between the, the edge and the magnet, and that gave me close to 15 grams. So I change it to 16 millimeters, I got 12.6 grams. So you see the error of one millimeter can make a big, big, big difference. And that's why we try to make everything else as precise as possible, because we know uh, those little tiny millimeter distances, as you get closer and closer, your, your effects go up drastically. So I did find the problem. When I went back and looked at the original pictures that were printed out, the, this armature is way, way, way too high. I put 33 millimeters in. I think what that was was a measurement to the top, to the top of this guy. I'm not 100% sure where I got 33 millimeters. So we're going to go back into the range. We're going to approximate the arrangement. Uh, that, let's go to that video now. We're here to reestablish the height of the coil above the magnet. I tried to discern this from the videos. Unfortunately, Due to distortions, I was getting numbers that didn't make sense. Numbers in the area of 25 millimeters. So what I've done is I've recreated the experiment. I'm going to switch to macro mode so we can go in close. Is what I'm using is the approximate space is about two millimeters. I'm using two carbon pencil leads to establish the gap between the coil and the magnet. And the height we're looking for is the height of the center of the coil here. That's where the coil is. We're going to measure the distance from the uh, base to the coil to put back into the software. And so, getting out my trusty ruler. And I'm getting answer of approximately 21 to 22 millimeters. Okay, so that's what we're going to go put into the software. Okay, so when I put the 21 and 22 millimeters in, it's much, much better. It's a lot better than the 4.5 grams. But I had to put 20 millimeters in, which is a little bit lower than I think where the actual armature was to get about the right answer. So this is showing us now that what I talked about before, the approximation of a current edge current using an infinitely thin filament uh, it's starting to show that as we get closer and closer, it is a little, it's giving us, but I mean a millimeter difference. I'm going to change the software to approximate current distribution and a much thicker wire, uh, wire with substance. And then see if that doesn't give me more close to the proper answer for the height of 21 to 22 millimeters. And see if that's the effect. Uh, that might, in fact, be the, 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 what's the little tiny bit of error we have left here. But Right now, as it stands, everything's good to go. We can go on, and in our next video, 
Um, we're going to use the physics software to analyze various real gun geometries and choose one to build. Okay, so right now we have confidence in all the tools is basically where we are right now. So that we can use those tools to get reasonably good predictions of what the force and how much current we're going to need, how much power we're going to need, yada, yada, yada. Okay, thank you very much.